Okay, so today we got the reveal for the future of Destiny 2. And so Bungie have just posted a new Vidoc, which is actually about the remainder of this year in Destiny 2 and the release of the episodes. But there are also some teasers for more things in the future of Destiny as a franchise and for Destiny 2 specifically coming in 2025. So we get a pretty juicy look at some of the content that we're going to enjoy over the next year, plus those teasers for the future. So right here, we're going to break it all down. Interestingly, Bungie are actually referring to this as Year 10 of Destiny, which of course is true, it's Year 10 of the franchise overall. And Bungie say that episodes are telling singular stories that kind of stand on their own separate to the bulky stories that we get for expansions. And they're designed to both sort of answer questions about the aftermath of the events of the final shape, but also to build up mysteries for the future of Destiny, which is an interesting tease. Of course, there's lots of discussion about a potential Destiny 3, but also we have life left in Destiny 2, so I guess you can kind of read into that however you like. And Bungie say episodes will introduce a single object of immense power, and those are the echoes that Bungie actually refer to as being echoes of the battle that we've had with the Witness, in this kind of collision of darkness and light that's been initiated by the defeat of the Witness in the final shape. So it's a cool sort of story setup, and they tease that the echoes are spreading out across the galaxy, and that's where Year 10 episodes actually come in. So firstly, they speak about Echoes, specifically the actual episode release that's coming up this week. And they say that the first Echo we've encountered has landed on Nessa, so we get some really cool cinematics right here. But also we can see that this has transformed the location fairly significantly, and some of the visual themes on Nessus have been adjusted, but also the architecture and some of the zones are completely different to how they were before. And so heading into Echoes this week, we're going to return to Nessus. And the devs say we'll find that the Vex are behaving a little bit strange. And that's where our new work with Failsafe comes in. Also, we're seeing some armor ornaments and things like that here for this episode. They certainly look pretty wild. And Bungie show off the new kind of game mode or the core game mode for episodes, which is called Breach Executable. And this is going to be a three player activity on the destination. And it appears to be very sort of PVE arena style, not necessarily dissimilar to what we've had with seasonal activities previously perhaps a little more similar to something like Prison of Elders. And Radialaria will be a key theme here as well. We've seen that on some of the weapons associated with the season, which we've spoken about recently. And there'll be these sort of geezers of Radialaria that pop out of the ground during these activities. So the concept in terms of the story is that we're there to sort of stop it from happening. And they also say things that have only really previously existed inside of the Vex network are now moving out into other parts of the world. There are some clips of Nessus here looking very different with sort of new greenery and almost more earth but equally surreal version of Nessus compared to what we have right now. But as part of that Nessus story, we'll be traveling towards the core and discovering ancient secrets of lost civilizations within Nessus, which is pretty cool. Bungie also teased that we have a mystery new enemy inside of episode one. And this is a type of enemy that we haven't previously encountered. There's some super freaky artwork right here for it in this cinematic. And obviously there are forces at work that we haven't previously encountered in Destiny. So a pretty interesting setup for the first episode right there. Bungie keep it pretty light in terms of actual details and spoilers, as well as previews and things like that for the episode, outside of sort of laying out the general idea of it. But nonetheless, it looks pretty cool. And certainly in terms of sort of reworking destinations and introducing new components, it looks like Bungie have took that a step further than perhaps we've seen in the past. So really looking forward to actually getting in game this week and checking that content out. And of course, episode one kicks off tomorrow on June 11th. So I'll be keeping you posted on that. But beyond that, Bungie talk about Revenant. And so they say Revenant is going to be a Fallen themed episode. Straight away, we're seeing some really wild cinematics for this. And they reference the fact that the Fallen don't have a home planet anymore. And so the Fallen have been sort of spreading out across the galaxy looking for a new home. Interestingly, they say it's about slaying vampires. So we're getting this almost vampire version of Fallen. And they say there'll be a touch of Splicer mixed in there as well. Plus they add that the player will get to be a Slayer Baron. And this is an enemy type in Elixney culture that we don't know a lot about, with a role reserved for the most renowned monster hunters. So that's interesting. Also, possibly, we're looking at a new exotic right there, as well, of course, as the new armor. These are just concept arts at the moment, but pretty cool teaser for some of the stuff we can expect to see. And they do reiterate that there is this sort of vampire hunter fantasy for the episode. So we see more concepts for some of the armor here, and yet another, what appears to be, more than likely, an exotic weapon. Plus they say there'll be a new system called potion crafting. We can see a new area here, 
here, perhaps in the tower, where we're going to be able to create combat potions. And these will be sandbox focused things that will sort of adjust the artifact directly, but there'll also be loot potions. And these are going to allow us to have more agency over the rewards we're chasing. So this will affect both the sandbox and the reward system for this episode. And a little bit like Pathfinder, they indicate that they want to have more experiences where we can sort of choose which route that we go in order to progress and unlock rewards. So that's a bit of a theme in terms of gameplay this year. But they say as well, Fickrel is back and is in possession of an Echo, which is Fickrel's staff essentially, but with an Echo attached to it. So obviously the enemy is going to be causing some issues there. And they reference Fickrel's Watchtower, an awoken vampire keep. So sort of very dark vampire fallen is definitely a new vibe. But finally, they talk about heresy, which is going to be much more hive focused. And it's about the hive pantheon dealing with the aftermath of the witness and how that influences relationships within the hive. And they refer to this new eldritch force, which is sort of bubbling up and opening doors into new mysteries, one of which will actually be the Dreadnought, which is going to be returning. So I wasn't anticipating that we'd see the return of the Dreadnought. It wasn't really even on my radar. But as an episode destination, you know, versus something like a season, if we actually get a significant explorable area, something akin to the original Dreadnought, that's certainly a step up from what we typically get in a content drop as part of a season. But they say they're going to give the Dreadnought new purpose. Once again, it will be a fortress of secrets, but the Dreadnought itself is sort of peeling away and unlocking new mysteries. And that's also a visual theme for the update, with the weapons themselves kind of peeling back and going into this almost skeletal version. And they say since this release deals with two big themes, they want to represent some of that in the armor set. So firstly, there will actually be an Eris themed armor set, not identical to Eris herself, but more or less class versions of Eris's armor, which is really cool. And additionally, there'll be hive ship navigator armor. Reminds me quite a bit of the war priest actually from back in Kingsfall. And there are plenty of concepts of bits of gear right here, potentially exotic weapons and certainly legendary items. So a return to the Dreadnought is pretty exciting stuff, especially if it's filled with as many sort of secrets and mysteries as what we saw back in the Taken King. So while this is a very early look, I think it looks pretty promising at the moment. And they say with every episode, there'll be a ton of interesting twists and turns. And much in the way that we've got Vampire Fallen, a return of the Dreadnought and a reworked Nessus, it's obvious that Bungie's goal is to surprise players and to sort of approach visual themes and ideas that they haven't necessarily had the chance to work on in Destiny previously. So that is the early look at year 10 episodes right there. But at the end, they also talk about year 11, or they reference it, should we say. And the code name for year 11's content at the moment is called Frontiers. They add that the journey will continue in 2025. Obviously, we don't know if Frontiers is referring to an expansion, Bungie had previously said that episodes are the way that they're going to tell stories moving forward in Destiny. So Frontiers, much like Echoes, could be an overarching theme for another year of episodic content in 2025. We'll simply have to wait and see. Episodes will almost certainly be the main content format for the year. But as well, whether it's a Destiny 3, if that were to ever happen, or simply referring to future Destiny 2 content, as Bungie have said, episodes are going to kind of set up a lot of new elements, which will influence the story moving forward beyond the light and darkness saga. So a pretty cool look at the future there, guys. And while it is nice to have a look at juicy new content that we're going to get down the road, I'm sure that this reveal will kind of create as many questions as it has answered. Bungie certainly loved to tantalize us, though, so that is to be expected, I suppose. But there we go. Let us know your thoughts about it down below. I'll be keeping you all posted on episode one launching this week, as well as any new Final Shape content that we get in the next little while. So give us your opinions in the comments section. But if you've enjoyed this one, a rating below really helps us out as well. And otherwise, be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you posted with more content. But for now, cheers for tuning in, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.